Today, the bubbling biochemist is taking you behind the scenes of crystal screens. So, X-ray crystallography is this technique that we can use to figure out what proteins look like at the atomic level. And I've talked about it a lot, so I'm not going to talk about it here. But the key thing to keep in mind is that you need your protein to form crystals. And so what you want are nice, pretty crystals like this. But normally what you end up with are, like, drops that have nothing in them. Um, or drops that have a bunch of clumpy protein that's just like clumped up and not like in the crystals where it's all orderly. It's just in this clumpy aggregate or precipitate. Um, and so different proteins have different conditions that they want, that they will crystallize in. There are just so many things to test. So the main things we test are like pH um, as well as precipitants such as um, pegs and salts and stuff. And so I talked a lot about those yesterday. I'll go briefly into them today. But, so I talked more about the theory yesterday. Today I'm going to show you what it actually looks like. Um, so this post is for, um, particularly for those people like my family and friends who are always curious what I do like on a day-to-day basis or what things look like in the lab. So I haven't actually done crystallography in a while, but um, people in our lab still do. Um, and I still like to um, keep an eye on it and keep it fresh because um, it's pretty cool. But anyway, today I want to talk about screening and optimization. So how you actually find conditions that your crystal, that your protein might crystallize in. Today's post is dedicated to my mom for having us do those like rock candy um, experiments as a kid. Um, because little did she know she was preparing me for x-ray crystallography. I said that the idea with crystallization was, it was kind of like rock candy, right? What I meant by that is, so when you're making um, rock candy, what you're doing is you get, um, you like dissolve a bunch of sugar in water. And so you do this and when the water is like boiling, so it's like a high temperature. You have the high temperature, you have like a super saturated solution. So there's more sugar than the water can comfortably hold. Then when the, con um, then when the conditions are right and the temperature decreases, the, um, sugar comes out of solution in this orderly um, lattice, so like this repeating structure that we call a crystal. Um, and so because the water can hold less sugar at the lower temperature, sugar has a lower solubility. So when you drop the temperature, then the sugar can start to crystallize out. So the idea is similar with crystallization in that we want to get the, the protein into the super saturated zone where there's more protein than the water can hold. And then we want to take it out of the saturated, super saturated zone into um, this form of crystals. But we can't really just like boil our protein and then cool it down. I don't think our protein would like very, that very much. So we have to use different ways to decrease the solubility. The main method that we talked about before was um, vapor diffusion. So where basically you're having like water evaporate out of a drop that contains your protein. But that doesn't just contain your protein, it also contains like a cocktail solution. So today I'm gonna to tell you about these cocktail solutions. So they contain like a mix of precipitants. So these are agents, um, like chemicals, that help promote the um, crystallization by decreasing the solubility of the protein. And there are a few different classes that we'll talk about. Um, so there's like salts, um, which kind of steal the water away. There's um, pegs, polyethylene glycol, um, that they're just really big and floppy and so they take up a bunch of space so they leave the protein less space. Um, there's also like organic solvents, things like ethanol, which kind of uh, make the water less attractive to the protein and that sort of thing. Different proteins have different ideal combinations or different cocktails that they will help them crystallize. So it's different for every protein and there's also different things like the drop sizes and that sort of thing. So we have to try out a bunch of different conditions. And um, so typically we start with screening. If you're like, have a new protein, you wanna see how can you get it to crystallize. You start with like screening. So you have like 96 well plates. If you go to like super high throughput places, you can even like ship your protein off to these facilities. They have like 1,500 something, I don't know. It's like 16 of these plates in one little, in one plate that's like the same size. It's crazy. But so for us, so we typically start with like 96 well screens. Um, and the idea with the screen is to try, there's different types of screens, but the basic idea when you're starting out is you just want to try as many conditions as possible. So you try different salts and different pHs and different um, additives and that sort of thing. 
um, often in like a grid search. Um, so like going down one way, you'll have you'll be changing like the pH, and then going down the other way, you'll be changing like the pH concentration or that sort of thing. But there are so many different things you can test out. Um, and so some screens also try to take like a more like sparse matrix approach. So just like try out a bunch of random type of stuff to try to sample as much as like the chemical space as possible. So like the most um, like bunch of like super different things. And then the idea is not that like one of them is going to be perfect. The idea is that you're trying to find like an initial fit. So we have all, we get all of these like pre-made um, screens. Um, they sometimes come in like tubes then you have to like um, conical tubes and then you have to actually like dispense them into the wells. Um, but nowadays they're coming more and more in these blocks um, which are pretty cool. Um, you can see um, that so they have a different thing in each of the blocks. So sometimes there's like a colored thing. Sometimes they're supposed to be colored but sometimes there's just like fungus growing in them. Like it looks like there's some like fungus growing in that. Yeah. We can use this um, dispenser called the liquidator, and so it doesn't have anything in it right now, but I took a picture before so I can show you. Um, so you, it has this, you use like a whole rack of two uh, pipette tips, and you go out of the block and then into one of these plates. And then um, we can use this mosquito machine um, to dispense the plates, um, and I'll show you how that works in a second. Uh, but then the basic idea is that once you find a, an initial hit, then you can like manually optimize around the hit. Um, and you can, you can do that um, often in like a 24 well format. And that way you can also use bigger drops. Um, so it takes more protein, but you'll get bigger crystals hopefully. Um, and since you're doing it manually, um, like you can't do as the tiniest, as small a drops as you could do with the mosquito anyway, um, just because like physical limitations. We have this other machine called the Formulatrix that we can use to make like custom screens. So we have these like bottles and then you stick the bottles in here and it'll like make these custom trays for you. Um, and we have like tons and tons of bottles with different pHs and additives. Um, like different pegs and stuff, but you typically want to make the pegs fresh because uh, it'll work a lot better usually. Um, but yeah, different buffers, so pH stabilizers um, and salts. Lots and lots of salts. In this video, you can see the mosquito at work. So first it's taking protein out of the wells and it's adding drops of it to the top of like the stickery-like membrane that we're going to put on top. Now it's taking liquid from the reservoir. So this is the liquid with the precipitants um, and stuff. So like the salt, pH stabilizers, um, the pegs, all of that sort of stuff. And so it goes column by column. So you can have different things in each column. And it's adding a drop of that to the drop of the protein. So now you're making a more diluted drop containing your protein and the precipitant uh, mixture. You're putting the drops onto the top of these microscope slides I flip them over and place them on top of the wells so that are sealed with this ring of um, this like waxy oil stuff that's going to prevent air from escaping but allow me to take the covers off and so now I'm just pressing them down to ensure that seal and so I'm sealing the drop um, hanging over the well monitor them um, for crystal growth um, so this is our formula tricks machine and it's we call also call it our plate hotel because it holds all our five plates and then it has a microscope um, where it takes pictures of them at um, scheduled time points um and quick note so before i had told you about how you can send the samples off to like a facility that can do high throughput screening and often they'll do something called a micro batch method so I've been talking more about the, um, the diffusion methods where you're kind of like going into the super saturated zone and then you're like slowly coming back down gradually. With the batch method, you try to just like go to the perfect spot like right away, but you it's hard. Um, but so basically it's just like, because, but you're testing out like thousands of different conditions or whatever. The reason they use the batch is it's like you can do it on really tiny volumes. 
And so they put it in, um, they typically do like a drop under a layer of oil. Um, so it's pretty cool. But anyway, I'm not going to talk about that. Just be aware that that's the thing. 